All right, I'm back. <laughs> the rain has stopped for now. <laughs> I, well, these are just gonna get a little wet. That's okay, yarn can get wet. Project bags can get wet. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 219 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is, uh, what is today? <laughs> it's Sunday and it is the first podcast of March. Also, I am coming to you today from wine country here in California. I am at the Mayo Family Winery very early in the morning, well before they open. And we are in, let me make sure I get this right, Glen Ellen, California, which is in Sonoma County. We actually spent last night here um, as a harvest host, which just means we stay in the parking lot during the hours that they're closed. But we had to, got to taste the wines last night and we had just a really good time. And so then we asked them, hey, this is probably going to be one of the coolest places that we're at this week. Could we film a podcast early in the morning when nobody is there? And they said, yes. So I think you can. So behind me here, this is the tasting room. And then this right here, I believe is something for grapes. I didn't get the chance to ask. And then you can just see Lydia right there. Uh, Toaster and Kent are still sleeping. It is just after 7 a.m. I wanted to get out here while the light was beautiful. It's very foggy. I kind of took a pan so you can see like all the other fields out there. But anyway, it is early in the morning. So forgive me if I'm a little more like than usual. Uh, one other thing, there is uh, quite a bit of traffic noise. So there's just no really good way to get away from it except to be in the van and that's boring. So we'll do the best that we can to, you know, minimize everything. Um, so hopefully you don't hear it too much, but I am hoping that you can hear the birds because the birds are very, uh, like talkative this morning and it's kind of pleasant and nice. It's also about, let's see, it says it's 40 degrees. I don't really think it's that cold because I don't feel that cold. I am wearing my citrine light sweater. So I'm all decked out in wool. I'm wearing hand knit socks and we'll talk about this one in just a minute. I am drinking my first cup of coffee for the day. I usually just have, eh, most days I have two cups of coffee, but this is, uh, this is big for me to be getting into the podcast before I do my first cup of coffee, although I'm kind of liking it. It's like, aside from the cars going by, it feels like I, I'm out here alone in my own little world, which I really, really like. Okay, let's get into the first project and we're gonna talk about this hat. So I did finish this hat a few weeks ago. It's not a new finish. It doesn't really count in like the whip or FO category. However, it was a while until I could block it. And I was finally able to block it last week when I was staying with my friends, Gretchen and Shannon. Um, and I got to use their sink to block and everything. We were just having this whole period of time where we had not filled up our van with water. We actually got to fill with water at their house. So now we know we can fill our van just at, you know, if we're staying with somebody at their house, if they're okay with it. <laughs> so that was really great. Um, side note, the other, the issue that we're having now is that all of our like waste tanks are full. So the gray water is all the water that comes from the kitchen sink. And um, that one is very, very full. So while we have plenty of water to get us to our next campground now, we have to be even more careful with water because we can't fill our waste tanks until we can dump them in the right place. <laughs> so we're just going through all sorts of things here these last few weeks. Anyway, that has, um, Nothing to do with this hat, except that I wouldn't be able to block it still in the van. Um, I blocked it and it, uh, it blocked out very, very nicely. So one of the things that several people noted concern about with this hat, because it is made from alpaca, the American made alpaca. Actually, I should just get that label out real quick and we'll talk about the other project I'm doing with this yarn next. Um, alpaca has a tendency, uh, or just its makeup, um, makes it have, what's the right word? It's very, it grows a lot from product, from knitting it to final product, um, when you wear it, block it, steam it, whatever. So it's definitely something to be aware of if you're using 100% alpaca yarn, that your final product 
you need to consider that in your final product. You should always swatch and block a swatch for any item that needs to fit. Oh, it's starting to rain. All right, I'm back. <laughs> the rain has stopped for now. <laughs> I, uh, these are just gonna get a little wet. That's okay. Yarn can get wet. Project bags can get wet. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like there might be more rain coming in a little bit. When I first set out here, um, it wasn't supposed to rain for a couple of hours. So I might have to go back away again in a second, but I did bring an umbrella with me this time. I'm not worried about myself. Uh, the rain was not that heavy. It's more about the camera <laughs> and everything that is much less, you know, able to withstand the rain. But anyway, I'm back. Let me just make sure that I'm still here in focus. Everything is good. Okay, back to the hat. <laughs> what was I saying about the hat? I was talking about blocking. So I have a before and after blocking picture. And you can see that it's definitely relaxed with blocking as does a lot of materials, most natural materials. But 100% alpaca would really, really stretch. I feel like it's been a while since I've used 100% alpaca. I feel like it stretches a lot in length, um, more in length than in width. But anyway, what I was getting to the point of is that this hat did not do that. It pretty much blocked like a super wash wool or a, an, an all natural, um, what is it called, a non-super wash. That is because, I think, um, this is a 70% alpaca and 30% merino wool. And I guess that is just enough that it really didn't, uh, it didn't do that crazy big grow thing like 100% alpaca can. This is from American Made Alpaca. I got it at Rhinebeck this past year. So um, I was happy with that. I expected it to stretch a little bit more and it didn't. And so that's kind of nice. It really is retaining its shape and everything. Now, when you make these muscle bra, I'm trying to get that in my head to say it, muscle bra hats. Um, am I in focus? Sorry, let me make sure. <laughs> um, they feel a little tight when you first put them on. And I always have to remember that because I make a lot of these, but I don't finish them. You know, it's been a few months since I finished one maybe more than a few months. So when I first put it on, especially before blocking, I was like, oh, this is really, really tight. I hope it stretches a lot. Now I've been wearing it. I wore it uh, quite a few hours yesterday and it feels great. So if you put on your muscle bro hat and it feels a little bit tight, like a little bit tight, that's probably just right because it will stretch and then it will feel like perfect. Um, the only thing that I'm still not super satisfied, well, first I thought, I didn't get enough slouch on it, but I think I'm happy with this. I don't want it to be like slouchy where it kind of comes down, but I also didn't want it to be right up to the crown of my head because I have a small, I always feel like I have a small head for my body proportions. And it's, that's not just a feeling. It's, I think it's a fact. <laughs> I'm, I'm like average height, medium tall, five foot six, and I have a really small head. And so I feel like having a little balance right here looks right on me. <laughs> it's my favorite way to wear hats. Um, but what I still don't love is this right here. See how the rib is showing when it's worn this way? So I can flip this around and wear it uh, fold up the other way where the rib sticks out. And it looks fine like that because you can't see the stock in it. Um, I'm not going to do that for you today because my hair is a couple of days past its prime. We actually, after this, our plan is to go to Planet Fitness and shower and get get ourselves right. Um, but where was I going with that? Oh yeah, I'm not 100% happy with how that looks. And I know a lot of you said, um, I got like raindrops on my glasses. A lot of you said uh, in the past couple of weeks podcast that you thought it looked cute, but you liked the rib. You thought it kind of looked like a Pico. And I have to say, I'm not hating it as much as I did earlier, um, but I still don't love it. So right now I'm leaving it be because it's tricky when you're trying to do like a rib or something or a color change in this in this hat without counting rows. Oh, it's starting to rain again. <laughs> no, um, let's see if we can withstand it for a little bit. Um, it's tricky to kind of get the exact middle. And I found that even more true when I try to put ribbing into these hats. It's just, it's really tricky to get it right. So even though when I take this off and I fold it up and I fold it in half, it is hitting like, perfectly folding in half at that rib point. 
when I wear it, it just slightly changes. So I think what I would need to do is take back one of the crowns and maybe add like two more rows, like just a little bit, maybe two, three more rows of stockinette. <clears throat> so that way, when I folded it up this way, you wouldn't see any rib. And when I folded up the other way, ideally, you wouldn't see any stockinette. Um, so I might be doing that, but not until I am done with my second project in this yarn. So maybe I'll take another rain break and then we'll get to that project next. A little rain's not gonna get us down. <laughs> Let's move on to the next project here. Um, and this is my traveler's loop. So I'm also uh, making this out of the same yarn as my muscle bra hat. And that again is the American made alpaca yarn that I got in uh, Rhinebeck this past year. So I got, I have three total skeins of this yarn. One and a little bit was used for the hat. And then the other two should hopefully um, cover me for this project. So this is the Traveler's Loop by Don Barker. It is a, a helical knitting infinity scarf pattern. And it is uh, made for two colors, but I've just done one color, but I'm still doing helical knitting. So I'm still using two skeins of yarn because I've got two skeins of this alpaca and I'm alternating them every row. And I've really enjoyed this project. If you're somebody who doesn't like to purl, uh, you might not like this because when you're doing garter stitch in the round, you knit around and then you purl around. I'm finding that really relaxing. It's a great project to bring around with me, but I know not everyone totally loves that, but I'm really, really liking it. So I've got one strand of yarn. Oh, can you see me? Sorry, one strand of yarn here. It looks like, where's my other one? Uh, I don't know. These are all kind of getting really long. Oh, here we go. So I just changed over my helical knitting. So I've got one strand of yarn here and my current working one here. And I have done another maybe couple of inches this week. I had switched over my stitch marker to be a cactus because the area that we were in in uh, Texas and New Mexico where there's a lot of cacti and in Arizona too. But I think I need to switch my marker to something more appropriate for the West Coast now. If I had a raindrop, <laughs> it would probably be that or an umbrella or something. Actually, what I just did is I, it was only like five minutes of rain, but it was pretty heavy. So I just stood with the camera and the umbrella in my bags and I just stood in the rain <laughs> until it was done, until it was done. Um, but anyway, this is going great. I did want to finish this by the end of February. That was my goal and it's March, so I clearly didn't get that done, um, but that's okay. I am headed into colder weather in Oregon and Washington and I mean, even in this part of California, so it's not a big deal. I'm gonna be able to use it. It's totally fine. Um, my next kind of thing on this is when I get to the halfway point, so I think, this is going to be about nine inches wide. So when I get to about four and a half inches, I'm gonna weigh my yarn and see if I have enough to finish. So basically if I have another half of each skein left, um, and that will kind of clue me in if I'm gonna be able to get the width that I want. If it's gonna be a little bit narrower, that's okay. I just rather know in advance. Um, so I have another traveler's loop that is finished that I've been wearing um, in the meantime while I work on this one. And I, uh, found a new way this week that I really like to wear it. This is not like a new way that I invented or anything. Like this has been around, um, but I just realized that I really liked <laughs> wearing it this way. So I have a picture of me um, wearing the scarf this way, but basically I loop it around twice around my neck. And then on the final loop, I just let it rest like over my head and over my ears. And what I really liked about this, there was one day we were hiking where it was cold but too warm to wear a hat like I didn't want my whole head covered but I just wanted a little something to block the breeze so that was perfect and then yesterday we were somewhere that was so windy and so cold that I had on this hat and then I also had that wrapped around my neck and head so it was nice because it covered my neck and then it also kind of covered my face a little bit kind of blocked the wind and then because it was you know knitting on knitting it stayed in place pretty good even with the wind um, so I really like that. So I'm excited to have this one done. So I have like my whole, you know, matching set and everything going on. I'm moving you a little closer to me because now that the sun, I mean, is behind clouds, but now that it's up, it's getting a little bright behind me. So hopefully that's a little bit better. 
doing the best that we can. Um, let's talk about my blanket. So this is the Summer Fade Hexi Blanket by Mallory Crawl with modifications that I've made to use it for my travel blanket. And I am currently in the process of catching up on all of these yarns that I have purchased in the last few months. So I have a few to show you today. Um, I think I've done maybe seven or eight or so over the last week since the last podcast. I am 10 colors into the 26, actually I think it's 27 <laughs> that I want to do before the Portland or the Rose City Yarn Crawl because I know on the Rose City Yarn Crawl, I'm gonna be getting a bunch of more yarns to add into this blanket. So I kind of want to be caught up as much as I can. So I might not make it. I mean, I kind of figured that would happen, but I will be very, very close. And I'm, I'm happy with my progress so far. So here is what it looks like. If you have not seen it yet, it is looking very, very pretty. I'm going to try to be extra careful that I don't drop this into the dirt, the wet dirt outside today. Okay, so now I just have to remember where I left off last week, because I did plan to put in a marker on my last uh, one that I did last week, and then I just totally forgot. Sometimes I find that I, I want to change out my progress keeper like the cactus, or I want to add in another marker, and then I just, I guess I'm a little too lazy to, <laughs> to get it out, but I, I should do that. Okay, so let's see. I know I was still working on my Yarny Bra yarns last week, and had I done two? Oh, I don't even know. I don't remember talking about these. So let's just start from, I'm gonna start from, let's start from where I know I had already finished, which was this one. Oh gosh, this is gonna be hard to do. This one, which was I, I had done in previous weeks. So this is where I started new and fresh. So this is a Mardi Gras mini from Teeny Button Studio. This one is called What Happens on Bourbon Street. I might have shown you these last week. And this one is from uh, Mitchell's Creations. This one's really, really fun. And then this might be where we're, we're new. Uh, this is Whimsy Stitches. It is called French Quarter. The next one is another Mardi Gras mini from Tina Button Studio. There were three in this mini set. This one is Experiment 626 from Floor de Sti Floor de Stitched. <laughs> and it is Experiment 626 is Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Uh, this is the final Mardi Gras mini from Teeny Button Studio. This is another one from Teeny Button Studio. This one's so pretty. It's called Flying Horses. And there is a carousel somewhere in New Orleans uh, that was the inspo for that one. This one is the last one from Teeny Button Studio. This is a Mardi Gras Mambo. Here's another one from Whimsy Stitches. And sorry, the backlit does not do these colors as much justice as they deserve, but pictures are on my Ravelry and on my Instagram. Uh, this one is called Bourbon Street. And then this is the last of the New Orleans yarns. This one is another one from Florida Stitched and it's called Jukebox. So I was so happy yesterday, I, I finished that square, or maybe, or, or Hexi, sorry, maybe two days ago. And I was like, yes, okay, one big chunk is all done. Because if you watched the Getting My Knit Together video, I had all of the yarns out and I had them organized by state. And I was, you know, I'm kind of thinking of them in, in terms of state by getting them done. So after I finish up all the Louisiana ones, we are moving on to the next state that I travel to in real time. What is that called? What does that mean? The, it's a C word, chronological order. I think it's chronological order. Um, Arkansas. Arkansas is the next state. And I've only added one into Arkansas, Arkansas so far. And that is this one from Arkansas Yarn Co. It was a mini skein that we got in our goodie bags for the event that we did together. And it's called Love AYC or Love Arkansas Yarn Co. Kind of like a combo of our things because my thing is Love and Stitches and they're Arkansas Yarn Co. And so it's a really fun color. And then in the car right now, I didn't bring it out with me. 
I am working on another um, mini from Arkansas Yarn Co, kind of their signature color. And then the next one I want to put in is our Nitty Natty colorway that we collaborated on. So I am trying to finish up the sock, the first sock of the one that I'm making. So I will get to that one in just a minute. I, I did a little, little bit on it last night. I think I'm ready um, to do the toe, but all in all, blanket is going really nicely. Um, working on two to three of these most days, not every single day. Um, when we've been driving, sometimes it's not the easiest to for me to crochet. I find it like harder to catch the stitches. Whereas with knitting, I feel like if I'm bumping a little bit, I can still, I can bring both needles up together. I don't know why with crochet, it's like harder for me to keep the fabric <laughs> in line with the hook. I just find it a little more challenging, but I'm doing uh, as many as I can. And I have, I think I have 17 left to go because I think I counted originally 26 total yarns, but I had forgotten about the Nitty Natty colorway. So I think I have 17 more to go. I did 10 from New Orleans. So it is currently Sunday. If I wanted to be done by Wednesday, what is 17 divided by four? I guess I would have to do four per day. So that's not gonna happen <laughs> probably, but I will try to get as many done as I can. We're gonna try a slightly different angle. I think this may be a little better with the sun actually now coming up through the clouds. I see a little bit of blue sky and you get a slightly different angle. I mean, maybe not the, maybe not the most flattering. We've got a couple of utilitarian things here, but you can see they have a few, um, what are these called? Like the, the vines for the grapes and everything. But of course it is winter right now. I don't know anything about grapes. I'm just saying things. I'm just saying, stating facts that this has to do with wine and it is winter. And that's all that I know. <laughs> I don't know if there's a correlation between the two. Anyway, how about going on to the next project that I do have knowledge about? I have finished a single sock from a pair. So this yarn is from Desert Vista Dye Works. And it is the A Court of Colorway, like A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I was first knitting on them while I was finishing the series. But now I have since moved on to one of the other series from the author. And it is called, what is it called? Oh no, it's Crescent City. I think the whole thing is called Crescent City and I'm reading the first one. So I don't knit on these a lot every single week, only just a teensy bit. And so I just finished sock number one. And these are the Vanilla is the New Black socks. So they have this really fun heel called the Strong Heel. And I am having my mom send out a set of sock blockers to me because I found that I really miss having them to block things. So I will be able to show my socks, I feel like, a little bit better um, once I get those. That'll be a little while, but I'm excited to get that. And when I'm done with this pair, I can block them or at least show you how they look. So after I finished the first uh, sock, I right away cast on sock number two so that I have something to work on while I am reading. So I do a contrast um, cuff and then do the self-striping. I'm following the pattern pretty much all the way down to here. I do the contrast uh, turn like they describe in the pattern. And then I did some decreases. So you can see I think you can tell, yeah, the stripes are a little thicker on the foot because I have fewer stitches than I did on the leg. So I just like having a few less stitches on there. It's kind of funny how things turn out like this, but I also finished the first sock of another pair of socks this week. So these are my greatest yarny adventure socks with yarn from Wool and Women Fibers. I, I didn't bring out the other project bag I have for these because I like to keep them in my chalk bag for hiking since that's when I work on them most. So I finished up, again, pretty much the same amount from the toe or from like the last part of the foot down through the toe, which is very funny. So I made, this is the same uh, sock pattern as the previous one, the vanilla is the new black, but I made a couple of uh, fun little mods. I actually cast on fewer stitches. I did some fun little stripes and that's pretty much it. Everything else is still relatively the same to the pattern. Um, I've had a couple of people ask, you know, how does this heel wear? Um, and I can't tell you yet because I haven't finished a pair yet. <laughs> I, I guess I finished two socks now, but I need to finish a pair, block them, wear them, and then I will let you know. 
I was, we were out at the Channel Islands this week and then we went to Pinnacles National Park. So we did a ton of hiking. And so I finished that sock actually on a boat out to the Channel Islands. And then I went ahead and started the next one so that I had some easy knitting for hiking. So this, all, all of these, all of these socks for the most part have been done while doing some kind of fun adventure. So the yarn itself, the kit that this came in was the greatest yarny adventure, but I'm just keeping with the theme and making these my adventure socks. So I don't like to work on them when I'm just sitting in the car or, you know, sitting in bed. I want to work on these while I'm doing something cool. And so, um, yeah, lots of hiking this week that, that made sure that these got a lot of work on them. So this is sock number two. I have just started the increases for the heels. You can see what that looks like when you just start them. Actually, I don't know if you can see, can you see? Oh yeah, I think I focus now. So I just really enjoy doing this heel. I think it's a lot of fun um, to make. There's no, that's not true. I was gonna say there's no short rows. There are short rows once you turn the heel, but there's not as many short rows as like a, a true short row heel, a fish lips kiss heel or something. It's just kind of like a heel turn on a heel flop and gusset. Much, much easier. Um, so I really have enjoyed making this heel. Again, TBD. I will let you know how it is worn once I finish a pair. And uh, there comes the sun, which is just lovely. It's now after eight o'clock. <laughs> the rain delays have really gotten us today, um, but starting to feel really, really a little bit warmer out here, which is a good thing. One last project and really not a whole lot to say about this one. It is my Nitty Natty sock. So this is the, do I have the label in here? I do. This is from Arkansas Yarn Company and it is called Nitty Natty. Whoa, the sun really came out now. Holy cow. <laughs> I put about two rows on this last night, not even enough to get a stitch marker out. So I really haven't done anything with this yet, but I am, oh, actually I know what I did. I did, a, I did maybe three rows last night, but I'm now ready to start doing the toe. So I want to go ahead and do the toe on these probably today because then I can take this yarn. I need it not attached to anything because I need to pull from the inside and the outside to hold it double stranded for my blanket. And I wanna add this into my blanket for the next hexi. So this will probably be something that gets finished. I was really thinking, wow, it'd be fun. Like a weird, fun, completionist kind of thing if I finished the first sock of three different pairs of socks for this week's podcast. So I was close, but after we um, were at the winery last night, uh, we were, a little bit wiped. <laughs> so we, I did not do any knitting. Instead, I was like scrolling on Instagram and TikTok with, with Kent for a while. That just was more of what I needed to veg out after a day that was super, super busy. So today um, we'll be doing more of wine country and hopefully I can get the socks finished and maybe even get the hexi done for the blanket so that I can start sock number two. It is still raining and it is one day later, actually more than one day later because I was recording yesterday morning. Now we're at a campground and we're in like this little foresty oasis. I don't know if you can tell. This is all like greenery and trees um, behind us, but it is pouring rain. Anyway, I wanted to tell you about something that I learned about at Hot Springs Fiber Company uh, from Tracy, and it is this awesome subscription box that's a little bit different. Uh, so this is the Blanket of Knowledge, and thank you to Tracy for gifting me uh, my first two boxes. I'm very, very excited about it. So I want to show you what it includes. If you're a knitter or a crocheter, you're gonna love this. If you like to try out new stitches, if you like to try out you know, different yarns, I think you're really going to love this. This is the first kind of box subscription like this that I've seen that's, honestly, I've seen a lot of socks, which I love socks, but this one really caught my eye. There was a bunch of people working on it when we visited the yarn store. Okay, so in the box, this is in your first box, you can join at any time. Um, in your first box, you get a skein of either DK or sport weight yarn you pick, and then you know you can stay consistent throughout if you're making one project, or I guess if you wanted to change it up, you could change it up. And the really cool part about this is that you choose from one of eight different inspiration photos for the theme of your blanket. So I picked the one that is called 
serenity. It's this um, like beautiful uh, love seed, kind of velvety, pinky cushion. You know, I, I picked pink, of course. So this is February's colorway. If you uh, have this color, you should have, or this kit, you should have seen this one already. Uh, every month you get the skein of yarn plus a mini skein and the pattern uses both. Plus you get some extras. So there are some stitch markers for February's on here. I love these ones. And then in your first box, you also get what you need to start your pattern. So since I'm going crochet route, I got this pink Leica uh, crochet hook. And if you're doing knitting, you'll get knitting needles. And then you get your pattern. So every single month, you get the next step to the pattern. And this is what really attracted me to this. So there's, again, both knitting and crochet, and both were going on when we visited the store. But you work a really long strip, like the width of the blanket, and you add to it each month. So you take this, your monthly skein, and you use up the entire thing for that strip of the blanket. And then you get it all done, and then the next month you get another one. And of course, you know, you don't have to work it up every month and you don't have to do the blanket. But I love that this is um, part of it. So it's got everything you need inside. So that will be for your first month. Now, every month after that, you get the skein of yarn and the mini skein and then the next part of the pattern. So I do have March's box for Serenity here. So, Look away if you don't wanna be spoiled. Um, if you, again, you can join any time. Um, you just start with that month's um, colorway. If you order between the first and the 10th, I believe, and I'll put the link down below, but if you order between the first and the 10th of March, for example, you will get March's box shipped to you between the 15th and the 17th, or if you're in the Hot Springs area, you can go pick it up at the store. Um, if you order between the 11th and the 30th of the month or 31st of the month you will get next month so you'll get april's so i don't have april's to show but i do have marches so you do need to look away and somebody <laughs> somebody in a comment a couple weeks back said um natalie you're telling us to look away when you have a surprise but then you're describing it <laughs> so maybe tell us to skip forward so you're totally right i am totally spoiling the surprise by saying it out loud um, but i do like to describe the colorways um, just to help anyone who's uh, maybe has a visual impairment or if you're somebody who's just you know you're listening and not watching you're doing something else so i am going to describe it so skip ahead instead <laughs> that was a very good tip okay so here's March's colorway. Again, this is just for um, Serenity. So it's another really pretty like pink base. It's all going to be pink base for the Serenity one, um, but it goes with the previous color. Isn't that fun? I'm so excited to start this. And I went with the sport weight because I was kind of thinking I might like that for crochet. Um, I was really attracted to the crochet blanket. I got to see all the different textured stitches and I thought this would be a really fun way to learn um, new crochet stitches. So again, it comes with the pattern. It says top secret on here for me because, you know, so that nobody else can see the pattern. And then also March, the March box has some stickers, some tea, and then this really cool thing um, where did my phone go? I had Tracy tell me in detail what this thing is all about because it's really cool. So this is an acupressure ring. Here's what it looks like. And this is coming in everyone's March box. And you can actually just put it over your fingers and you move it up and down. Let me see if I can show. You move it up and down like so and it kind of helps your joints. Let me see the exact thing. Uh, when rolled up and down the finger, this ring applies pressure to the acupressure points and reflexology zone zones in the hand, thereby releasing tension. So I feel like Kent's gonna take this. Kent, <laughs> I feel like this is gonna become your toy because Kent always likes to have something to fidget with and it's kind of an, actually it feels really good. <laughs> I might have to use that at night, um, but that's coming with yours. So. Just to sum it up, 
Uh, the Blanket of Knowledge is a subscription box that you can join in at any time. Um, if you join between the 1st and the 10th of the month, you'll get that month's box. They ship around the 15th to the 17th, but you can also join in, you know, any time of the month. You'll just, if you're after the 11th, you'll be getting the next month's box. It's not just pink. There are eight different photos that Tracy took for you to choose from, and it goes with your theme. So I'm trying to think of the ones that we saw. There's so many fun ones. I think we saw somebody with the blue tide, which is a lot of blues, makes sense. I think we saw somebody with the enchanted one, which has like pink and purple and orange and yellow. Anyway, it's super, super beautiful. And it's quite, I think, includes so much for um, the price. So thank you again to Tracy for sending that to me. I'm really excited to get started on my blanket here in hopefully the next couple of weeks. And I will be sharing my progress with you as we go. You can find the, the link to learn more about the Blanket of Knowledge down below. And if you're interested in ordering, um, I do have an affiliate link, which is just, again, no extra cost to you, um, but it does help support the channel. Let me catch you up on what's been going on today. So I'm making a sandwich. First of all, Kim and I are both eating lunch at like four o'clock. It's been a very busy day with this mustard that Kent's friend's mom made. So I'm very excited about that here in California, which is so cool. Um, anyway, we started the day in San Francisco. We woke up in a rest area with the most spectacular view of the Golden Gate Bridge, which was super, super cool. It was a loud night but it was worth it. So then Kent wanted to go to this national monument. It's called Muir Woods. Muir, Muir, I can't think of exactly how to say it. And uh, he did that and did like a walk and everything. And Toaster and I went to this overlook and we had breakfast and kind of cleaned up the van and everything because the parking was $30 and we didn't really want to pay that. And uh, then we went to a Point Reyes, or no, Point Reyes was the town. It was the national Point Reyes National Seashore. And again, Kent did that and I had an event. We did a Tunisian crochet sock class with Trisha Kopko, which was amazing. And uh, we met back up and we went to a lighthouse, which is one of the only lighthouses. Hang on, get some spinach. It is one of the only, I don't know if it's one of the only, it's one of the few uh, lighthouses that is still fully intact. Like everything, including the light and all that was there. So that was really interesting. We walked down like 300 and something steps, back up 300 and something steps, and then we drove here. So next up, and what we were mainly hopefully hopefully gonna be doing in this vlog is we are in or going to Napa and we're gonna be doing a winery today we're actually gonna be staying there tonight at a harvest host and hopefully one winery at least tomorrow but first Kent even though we're in wine country has to go to this brewery so he's gonna go get a beer <laughs> and then I'm gonna eat lunch with toaster and then we are gonna get finally off to our winery. We're in a town right now of about 60,000 people, so I thought we would have internet, but our Wi-Fi is not working. I was going to sit here and upload the event that we did the other day and maybe download some movies because I have no idea if we're gonna have service tonight at the winery and our harvest host, but uh, I have no Wi-Fi. So instead, I finally have 5G on my phone and I haven't been able to post Instagram stuff today so I'm gonna get caught up in all of that and eat my sandwich. By the way, the mustard is very good, slightly sweet, and just rest for like 15 minutes. Working now, yay!
we just had so much fun at the winery. They let us stay a little bit late because another party came in and they were just like really chill. Um, but we also asked them if we could film the podcast here tomorrow. So you will have already seen that of course, but fingers crossed we will actually be able to film outside tomorrow as long as it's not raining or anything. So we are here for the night, which is so nice because we get as a like a harvest host is usually a brewery or a winery. There are some other places, um, but the it's free. Like we do pay how much for a membership? Hundred bucks for a year. Hundred bucks for a year to access all of the sites on the app, and then the expectation is that you go in and you buy something from the business. So it doesn't have to be a lot, um, but for us it usually ends up being. <laughs> a bit because we just love the places that we go into and this was no no difference we really loved the port wine um so we got a bottle of the port wine that we'll have another night we already did a full tasting so no more no more for us tonight um so we're just going to uh, i was gonna say yeah the nice thing is that you're here at somewhere where you can have some wine or beer and then you don't have to stress about you know being able to have a safe driver because you're already parked for the night so we're safe we are good we're just gonna cook we're gonna put the bed down in a minute and we're gonna do a little bit of work and then we're good for the night. Yep. What are you making tonight? Pasta. And? Uh, like vegetables and chicken. Yeah, it's gonna be good. And feta. And feta. It's one of our favorite meals that we used to cook in New York. Please everybody tell me what color that you think this towel is. It's a little hard to tell in the dark. What color did you think it was? Like a reddish brown. Brown? Tan. Oh. It's like a tan. Oh, honey. It's tan. Okay. All right. Okay, everyone, let them know what color you think it is. It's okay. There's... Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> I have just finished recording this week's podcast outside at the winery. It's been quite the morning because of the rain and the cold and everything. So I'm glad to be back inside and to be dry. I took care of the bed part, Kent took care of the front getting everything put away, and that always takes a while. But now I'm just gonna put all my projects back up from doing the podcast, and then we haven't decided what we're doing yet. Are we gonna go shower, or are we gonna go drive? We don't know what to do. These are still a little damp. I'm gonna need to leave some of them out to dry a little bit. What did you get? Yay, they're the right kind. In the twilight's gentle flow, in the dance of fading light, we grow. And all of the warnings, when you want to be loved by everyone, you get fooled by everyone. Are you ready to go to the park? Are you ready? Oh my goodness. We got back inside just as it started to rain. It has been doing this raining off and on thing all day. Raining when it's sunny. We have been driving for a couple of hours now. Well, 
tent has been driving and we decided we're going to keep going tonight for a little bit longer than we originally planned because of weather. We think it's going to be a little safer to actually drive tonight before the temperature drops even lower overnight. Things can freeze and snow. It's like already 33 degrees here and it's so cold, but we are pausing for a minute to eat some dinner. I'm making myself some tea. We are putting the bed down so that when we roll into our rest area in like a little over two hours, we will just be ready to go right to sleep. We have just woken up in the most beautiful place. And I think this is just a little taste for where we're headed, but we're going to save that for next week. I moved again and now we are on the back like patio area. It's so nice back here. They've got a bunch of picnic tables and it's fenced in. So they told us yesterday, you can have your dog just come in and he can walk around. He doesn't have to be on the leash because we're the only ones here right now. So you may see Toaster coming in and out of the background just a little bit, um, but you can probably hear on the tarp above me that it is still raining. <laughs> so I thought, hey, we saw you know, the, the pretty views and everything. Why don't we come in the back and see something different and then I don't have to worry about the rain any longer. But I think you will hear it just a little bit. And oh, I brought, I forgot, I've been moving around so much. I brought myself some gloves because my hands are getting a little chilly. Everything else is good except for my bum is wet. <laughs> but now I'm sitting on a dry picnic table. So that is very, very nice. Okay, we have some, uh, things to talk about in our in our travels section. So um, you will have seen, I think we're going to go ahead and put that before um, the vlog of our time here in Sonoma and Napa, um, which has been really, really fun. We have a whole day of it coming up today that you will have already seen that I have not experienced yet. Um, and there's some other things of note in the past week that I wanted to share as well. So a couple of highlights here. Um, the first one is staying with my friend Gretchen in Southern California. Uh, Toaster loves staying there, loves her dogs. Um, we had such a great time with them. We stayed just one night, but we made the most of the days that we were there. We played a bunch of games, we hung out, we had food together. It was just really awesome. So. Thank you, Gretchen, for hosting us again. It was really, really lovely. Um, then we went to the Channel Islands National Park, which was so cool. It's one of the um, national parks that is only accessible by boat or plane. And we just had the most beautiful weather that day. We did a big hike, like five miles or so, um, just took in so many amazing views. The park has uh, a, a, one of the smallest, like, uh, what is it, top predators or whatever. It's a four pound fox and it is so cute and we got to see several of them. Um, so it was just a really, really fun and very cool day. Toaster, um, we hired a rover for him for that day so that we didn't have to worry about him because no dogs are allowed on the park. Um, I went to a couple of yarn stores this week. The first one was Old Orcut Yarnery in Orcut, California. Um, Lisa and I had been messaging on Instagram and so we were like, you know what? We're gonna be driving right by there. It's right off the 101. Um, so we went into the, uh, into the shop, um, kind of last minute we planned it and we ended up spending a couple hours there just hanging out and getting to know uh, some of the people that were hanging out there. And it was really fun, such a cute shop. And they just made a big announcement on their Instagram that they are gonna be expanding their space and they have their own yarn line. Um, so, uh, I got to, I'll show it to you when I get to it in my blanket, um, but Lisa gifted me a skein and I'm really excited to add it in. Uh, let's see. I know, you okay, Toaster? You all right, buddy? <laughs> He's like squinting in the sun. I don't think you can see him. Maybe? Yeah, you can right there. <laughs> I know the, um, one of the people is going to be coming into work soon. So I kind of want to finish before they get here, even though we have their permission, I don't want to be in their way. <clears throat> Okay, we went to another national park, Pinnacles National Park, and did the longest and highest elevation change uh, hike that we have done so far since we started hiking about a month ago. Um, we did about between five and six or six and seven miles and like 1600 feet of ele elevation change, um, which for us is the most intense that we've done so far. It was a really, really cool hike. Again, I knitted on my socks a lot, um, but there was parts 
where you're like going up and down this mountain and there's just these little tiny footholds, like one foot wide, not like a foot measurement, but like for one foot, you put it into the foothold and then the next one's like a step up. It was wild and it was very, very cool. And then lastly, uh, we went to another yarn store and I meant to look up where this is, but it's, it's near Monterey. It's, the town is not Monterey. I think it's Pacific Grove maybe. And this is Monarch Knitting. This was a beautiful yarn shop. We went to it because a lot of people on Instagram message me like more than three, I would say. So when a lot of people are saying the same thing, I'm like, hmm, I need to check this out. And so I'm really glad we did. They were super nice. Um, they also have their own yarn line. So I got a yarn that kind of represents the, uh, what is it? There's something called the magical purple carpet that is a flower bush or something that, that happens uh, at a certain time of year there. And so I got that color, it's a purple, it's really pretty. Again, you'll see it when I put it into the blanket. Or maybe I can put a picture in here, actually. I could do that for both of those. Um, but it was such a, such a big, uh, beautiful yarn store. And something really fun that they do is they put together kits every single week. So if you are somebody who is looking for a new project, but you want some guidance and you're just like, help me narrow it down, um, you can check that out either in store or online with them. And then they already have it packaged in several different colors and different yarns with the pattern. I think with the pattern, or maybe you buy the pattern on Ravelry. Um, for you to choose from. So that was uh, super, super cool. So another fun week of yarn and adventure all mixed in one. This week's newest video is from Wool Market Fibers, which we visited, ah, oh, it's been a while, um, in Mississippi. Did you know that there's only two yarn stores in all of Mississippi? This one is in Southern Mississippi, like a mile from the ocean and it is a great yarn shop and not only do they have yarn they also have a bunch of needlepoint i think cross stitching and then fabric so this yarn store has it all literally um, they have a cute little section in the front that's for you know guests anyone who's uh probably not interested in the fabric and the yarn you can hang out and chill and then they've got a really big table they have the table set up with um power strips in the middle Toaster, are you trying to play with that stick? I've never seen him play with a stick in my life. <laughs> what is happening? Um, anyway, they have the table set up um, so that people can bring their sewing machines in, uh, plug into the middle and have plenty of space. And they have like rolly chairs and everything. Anyway, it's just a really cool store. And we had so much fun. We came in, uh, I can't remember what day of the week it was, but they have a certain day that they gather. And so we came in for that day and uh, all, there was new people there, but also like regulars there. And so some of the regulars had coordinated a potluck style lunch. They included us in that. We had red beans and rice. It was just like the hospitality was fantastic. Um, and then we came back the next day for the store tour um, and it was amazing. And the other thing about them is that they have their own yarn line and it takes up like a whole wall of the store. And it is uh, her husband, that dyes the yarn. So he dyes it at home and then brings it into the store. And there's just like so many fun colors. I ended up getting a King K color. And anyway, we had a great time. So please go check out that yarn store tour. Um, and I hope you enjoy that one. Okay, let's see what else is going on. So uh, the Rose City Yarn Crawl is happening this weekend. If you're watching today on Thursday, March 7th, it starts today and it goes through March 10th. I now know where I'm going to be. So I am going to be at the Naughty Lamb on Thursday. So probably a little too late unless you close this and go over there right now. I'm gonna be there in the morning and then I'm gonna be back um, in like the last hour before they close. So there is going to be a Ruby and Roses trunk show there. There's another trunk show that day. And then a ton of the stores have trunk shows like every single day of this crawl. I mean, it is jam packed full. So I'm gonna try and I, and I will have already done this to share a bunch of stuff on my Instagram stories for that if you're going to be there. Uh, let's see. The next thing is the Bay Area Yarn Crawl. Oh, I need to take my glove off so I can scroll over and see what, this, what the dates are. Um, the first annual Bay Area Yarn Crawl happening in the Bay Area of California is March 15th through the 24th. There are 21 shops and we are probably going to come back down for this. <laughs> we were planning to stay in the Oregon and Washington area after Portland, 
Uh, but now we're thinking we're gonna come back down and do the Bay Area yarn crawl and see how many shops we can get to and then go back up. So stay tuned. I will let you know about that, but it is happening regardless. Uh, the Knit for Food Knitathon is happening on March 23rd. I don't have a number update. I forgot to grab that before I got started. Hey, Booster. Um, but we are fundraising for that cause. Uh, the goal for at least my Love and Stitches group that I have is $1,000. Last week we were at 545, so I'm guessing we are you know, inching our way closer to that goal. I will continue to share more about it when we get closer, of course, and I will be um, knitting on that Saturday, the 23rd, uh, throughout the Yarnathon and making something to give away as a prize to uh, a couple of donies. Last thing is Yarn Centric is happening in Frederick, Maryland, uh, May 2nd and 3rd. I'll leave the details down below. You can grab your tickets for either the Thursday night or the Friday um, to go along with your Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. This has been one wild podcast. Thanks for sticking with me through all the audio things, all the lighting things, all the rain, all the changes of scenery. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you to the Mayo Family Winery for letting us film here today and for letting us stay here as a harvest host. Um, if you're ever out in the area in uh, Sonoma, in the Sonoma area, definitely come by. They were fantastic hosts. It was full in there last night with people doing wine tastings and we had such a blast. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.